Hello my soccer universe, the Bundesliga is back with a bang. We had 41 goals in 9 games, that's four, more than 4.5 four goals per game on average. Absolutely incredible and uh, very very clear. I honestly think the Bundesliga, if they wouldn't have the scheduling here that they do have with the conference, where you can watch you know, like goal show back and forth, I probably wouldn't watch as much Bundesliga as I actually do. But given the amount of goals that are scored and the drama that is within every game, in addition to full houses and a lot of excitement there, it is actually becoming very fast. I'm almost becoming like a regular Austrian. The Bundesliga is the most favorite league. No, the Bundesliga will never be my favorite league. Uh, but it is up there as one of the most entertaining uh, for sure. And not only did we get a tons of goals, we also got quite a few lopsided results, some of which came completely out of the blue. I mean, I'm wearing current that I did not expect. I expected my current to win against Bremen, but not with a 7-1 scoreline, uh, as we'll talk about. And what Wolfsburg did to Freiburg, if it if you would have told me this game ends 6-0, I probably would have, would have done it the other way. But actually, Wolfsburg have been on a very, very steady climb. Uh, climb. They have now, after a really wretched start, they have now five wins in a row already. So yeah, rather, rather interesting stuff. The only thing, the only real downside of all the excitement is that despite Bayern dropping points, they are still very much the clear leaders and the clear favorites to win it all. And I don't, one doesn't really see a real contender because the only other team that could contend, yes, they made up points, but the only other team that probably has the potential to go in there is so unsteady in Dortmund. They only they win just by the skin of their teeth against Augsburg. So yeah. Let's start with the match of the reigning 10 times defending champions, Bayern, who actually had a really, really rough uh, start to that, because playing at Leipzig is never that easy, because they might be the other team that uh, has, to, has the potential, but I also don't quite uh, see it. And it was a very uneven performance, uh, you know, you could clearly say this is the first game back, and yes, uh, you play against a team that has a clear identity, and with Marco Rosa, a coach, uh, that also doesn't make it easy on you. They have a goal by Goretzka, correctly called for offside. Then uh, Chupomoting, just before they have gets the goal, goal, goal by however, Halstenberg equalizes in the second half. Um, and I think that Leipzig definitely earned the draw in that one. So yeah, uh, the overwhelming favorites off to a not so great start let's put it that way uh still it's the first draw in a long streak of uh wins we have bochum beating uh, hertha fully deservedly 3-1 yes hertha almost thought they had scores go go but the uh, ball was over the line but this would have begun against the run off of play and the 2-0 um ahead of uh, uh before the half and then right after making three nil it was a really really full energy performance by bochum who are on their way back and hertha big time hertha because they consider themselves still a big uh club are in seriously big relegation trouble at the moment falling into the relegation zone with that one uh, and Bochum who seemed like they might uh, go under maybe they can get a turn to turn around remember their energetic performances from last season uh, the scoreline between Frankfurt and Schalke is a very clear one with 3-0 however Schalke had a pretty good performance in Frankfurt uh, Lindstrom gave Frankfurt the lead with the first shot on goal where Schalke could not convert their chances and the game was for the longest of times just a 1-0 and Schalke was well into that. They were only laid on Boré and Buter make it a very clear scoreline but one that was not even there. But it also shows that Frankfurt, yes, they're getting results and they actually might be the one team that if they can keep this, this is a big if, if they can keep this core together, not only did they win the Europa League, they actually could become a Bayern challenger eventually. But 
let's not get ahead of, 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 of themselves for now. They solidify, nah, solidify is really hard in this Bundesliga, as we'll see. But they are in a Champions League spot and are at the moment the first challengers. Um, because uh, Stutt, uh, because uh, as we see, Freif, Freif, but did, did lose. We had Stuttgart playing 1-1 uh, against Mainz. Probably they would have deserved a win under new coach Bruno Labbadia. A really, really great go-ahead goal through uh, Giresis and immediately call, um, equalized by a penalty. was also all right. Then both teams hit the wood. It was a rather entertaining game. Uh, with Stuttgart having the more of the game and a win would have definitely seen them go um, further up and would have given them a boost. Union Berlin <laughs> missed again a penalty. I think they have they missed the majority. I think four out of five penalties this season already. This time it was Jordan Pifok uh, that uh, did it. Then Bebu uh, gave Hoffenheim a lead. It was a rather tense affair, this one, that only turned late into Union's favor with Turkey getting an equal as in a 7-3rd and then late on he gets the go ahead, has to go in stoppage time. It ends 3 1 for Union, who, you know, after having a bad end to the year, maybe they can uh, start up again because you remember they were for a long time in the lead. The 6 0 by Wolfsburg against Freiburg was such a freak result. Yes, Wolfsburg, meanwhile, is a really good team. And Nico Kovac almost got sacked. Uh, so uh, that's one thing that has to be definitely said. However, having said all that, Freiburg controlled that game, created chances, and with two shots on goals, Wolfsburg made it 2 0, and then with the uh, fourth shot, they made it 3 0. Win scoring the last two of these, and he, of course, being the big one. Now, the one thing, singing the praises on Freiburg playing there, you cannot go 3 0 down, and then you cannot get completely thrown out of the park uh, losing 6-0. That is something that has to be definitely lo looked at because this is something very uncharacteristic for this Freiburg team from what we have seen before. Very uncharacteristic is also uh, the 7-1. This was what I mean, on Saturday I decided okay after you know I watched uh, the uh, Liverpool Chelsea I watched the con con conference and I said okay let's take some time with the kiddos. Um, have some fun there, do something together. And then I turned on the game like a half an hour in. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was already 4-0 for Köln against Bremen. And I actually put this off. Yes, this is a game of two teams that I generally always liked. Meanwhile, I'm definitely more on the Köln than on the Bremen side. That's also to be said. But that was an absolute crazy game. Super efficient by Köln. Yes, uh, I think the expected goals at the halftime were something like 3-1 in favor of Köln. But it was a 5-1 scoreline. Oh, no, not 3-1, but you know, uh, it was... I think Bremen had not, a point, not point, uh, six or something, something like that. But it, but it was definitely super, 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 super efficient. Um, Tigers needs to be pointed out because uh, he scored a really good second goal and then a world for a third one where he just takes the ball 40 meet, uh, meters out and sees the goal is there and uh, pulls it in. Uh, Skiri, of course, was also really, really good. Hussein Basic, 5 for 5 in the full crook, pulls one back and then Skiri uh, and a Friedel on goal set it up. But Kern. Um, you know, ahead of a game against Bayern, that's, a guess, I guess, the result that you need um, to kind of, kind of show that you're in good form. Um, we can talk a lot about Dortmund's frailties, but I think the biggest story for Dortmund is that Sebastian Allaire, after his testicular cancer uh, treatment, came back. He did not score. That man was that would, would have been probably too cheesy, but he came back, and that was uh, the the major, the only, the best storyline of the entire weekend. That someone from a cancer treatment uh, made the comeback relatively quickly, and as we saw, that Dortmund they probably don't have really um, that much trouble scoring goals, but they probably need a little bit more up front because what they're doing on the back is not worthy. Bellingham uh, turns on world-class mode to give Dortmund the lead. Then Schlotterbeck makes an error that allows Meyer to get an equalizer, but he makes quickly good uh, on the, on his mistake of getting the go-ahead, has a goal, but I don't know why they're forgetting about Demirovic 2-2 at the half. Uh, then the game goes back and forth with chances everywhere. 
Buy no kittens, uh, again, assisted by Schlotterbeck, gives them in the 75th, uh, the go ahead, head goal. And then again, they forget. This attack by uh, Augsburg was actually really, really well played, and Colina can make it 3 3. Uh, just a bit later, Gio Reyna, a brilliant shot. A really, really brilliant shot after Bellingham assist again. Bellingham and Reyna, two young players, are probably the best for Dortmund at, at this moment. Gave them the go ahead, had a goal. So we had within three minutes three goals scored. It was a really, really dead wild. Uh, and Augsburg then actually pressing forward probably should have gotten an equalizer again if Demirovic would have hit the ball a little bit better. And then at the very end, uh, there was also a big chance at the very, 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 very end when, uh, <laughs> who was it? Uh, it was uh, uh, Guerrero and Hummels who started an, an attack. Uh, should have made it 5-3, but it ended 4-3. Uh, very entertaining game, but um, while Dortmund will be happy to get the points, because they desperately needed that, because they were not on a good uh, uh, run. It also many, many questions have to be asked. And uh, also, uh, only 29 goals scored, 24 con conceded. It doesn't speak very well for Dortmund. Uh, the Gladbach-Leverkusen probably seems a little bit close. I mean, that's the one game that I, where I really have, haven't seen, but I saw that um, Leverkusen had a 3-0 lead in the 67. That only laid through two Stindl goals. It got pulled back. Now, if we look at the overall standings, uh, it is still before halfway point. It's now Frankfurt being a first Bayern chaser because Freiburg completely destroyed the goal difference, uh, which is an important uh, tiebreaker. And so Frankfurt, Union and Freiburg are level 11 points, but Leipzig, Dortmund and now Wolfsburg are right in there as well. Then there's the cut with Gladbach. Uh, Leverkusen also clawing themselves a little bit back. And then there's this next uh, trash in the uh, in and way. I think from Gladbach on, everyone could, with a bad run, get implicated into a relegation battle. The Bundesliga is really, really interesting uh, this season. Only Schalke seems to be a foregone conclusion of going down at the moment. Uh, I honestly... Every season, I think that Augsburg should go down. I think they again will escape. It's now, I think it's between uh, Bochum, Stuttgart and Hertha. Who will go down, who will play relegation and who will survive. Also, if you look at the, um, uh, you know, the differences, the performance graphs, you see that Bayern are off. They have a red bar. They're much worse than they should be. However, still, it's also Dortmund is just right there on, on the level. This is the goal I'm going to think Bayern are actually having an off year. This is a season where they could be gotten it, and no one really takes advantage of that. We also see it in the expected stand where Bayern is still expected to run away with, with the league. Now, Frankfurt makes it back into the Champions League spot ahead of Fre 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 Freiburg. Uh, Leipzig and Dortmund still very much expected to go in there, but you also see when you look look at the rating, Bayern, Leipzig, Dortmund have a, a gotten a huge chunk uh, of in the rating. So at the moment, they are at best the third best team uh, overall. We have a midweek round come, come, coming up, and I think Bayern against Köln looks like a really, really interesting one uh, right there. But we also have a few other ones. I mean, Freiburg, Frankfurt. That sounds like a proper top match if Freiburg wouldn't have lost 6 0. Um, I also think Mainz Dortmund is always one that can uh, get, uh, that can uh, provide an upset as well. And then on the weekend, we have uh, this is the replay from the first round. Frankfurt have to not only go to Freiburg, they also have to go to Bayern. And remember the first match day of the season where Bayern was just irresistible with a 6-1 win. But also Leverkusen against Dortmund was a pretty good one. Schalke Köln, that is always a dicey one, although we know how bad Schalke is. But I think Schalke are actually a much better team, but they probably will go down uh, this time. And we also start with the Berlin Derby on the weekend. So never forget about that and i guess in a week we will be back with a bundesliga review reviewing those two rounds in any case please let me know what you thought about the bundesliga this weekend give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye